Hey folks, Curtis Stone here. Today we're going to carry on our video series where we analyze all the states and provinces of North America and look at them through the lens and context of homesteading. And we're very broad, you know, I'm, I'm making, you know, pretty big sweeping generalizations and looking at topography in a fairly broad way. So I'm going to miss little details, so don't sweat the small stuff, take what you can and, uh, and leave the rest. So today we're going to look at Utah, and uh, Utah is one of those states out in this zone here that isn't really all that great for homesteading, to be honest. Uh, the main reason is, is that it's a wasteland, you know, just like much of Arizona, uh, much of New Mexico, much of Colorado, much of Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, Nevada, it's a wasteland. There's, there's very little trees, very little water. It's beautiful, but it, uh, it can have its challenges. And, and water is the most important thing um, when you want to get on a homestead. If there's no water, you can't really do anything there. So that is a big consideration. And so when we're talking about, you know, no-go zones, as far as water is concerned, we're ruling out most of the state, like, at least 80% of the state. And then also, because we always rule out major metropolitan cities, um, that biggest one is the Salt Lake City area in Utah. We're going we're gonna to rule that out too. Having said that, I say this every time, you can still find good homestead properties in the vicinity. It might not be the worst thing. We always put down a generic 50-mile radius, but don't, you know... Um, don't put everything in there. You might find nice places in these areas. And because of the topography of Utah, um, you know, a big part of the reason why we have these, these um, radius is that if you imagine just kind of like smashing uh, a city that was water and the water would go out in all the veins being the roads, people would do the same thing. They'd go out on the highways and spread out in sort of a food scarce scenario they're not really going to come up here because there's no major highways going up there so you know in this case you might find decent homesteads in there but we're not going to look in there just because that's just what we do when we look at these so keep that in mind so we're going to rule out a pretty big chunk of the state which leaves us with all these sort of green mountainous regions um, that are very high elevation this is another challenge with utah is that if you're not in the desolate dry wasteland flats you're in the mountains at very high elevation look at these points here you know 2300 meters times three for feet so like 3600 feet um then we get down to 1900 meters so it's going to be cold um so keep that in consideration you're going to be like zone three four maybe five in some of the lower places so that's something to consider. Some of the good areas we're going to focus on in this state. This is a short one. This will be a short one. Because um, it's just not a lot. Like, where are you going to go, right? This is desolate. So we're going to look at some of these areas here around this town. Mount Pleasant, Spring City. We've got some peri-urban areas down in the valleys here. Where you've got, you know, evidence of big ag. So you don't want to be too close to that. We see center pivots here. So you don't want to be near any of that stuff. Those... Center pivots will not only suck up all the water in those areas and those aquifers, but they will also pollute the downstream water. And so you don't want to be downstream from that, and hopefully you're not sharing a well with these. And so that's why we generally say avoid being too close to big farms. But let's look at some properties we've got. So in this one area here, we've got a nice little property up on the mountain here. And we've got... A nice little flat plateau that actually has a little bit of southern aspect, which is kind of cool. A bit of western aspect here, but it's nice and green. And it's basically just an old cut block, it looks like. So we've got private access coming in um, off not too much of a main road. Let's put some roads on here. And um, this property is more or less a blank slate. So you come up into this bench area here where you've got some cleared trees 
and you've got the basis of a nice homestead. This is actually very similar to my homestead. You're on this kind of secondary ridge here, primary ridge, right, being up here. That's a primary ridge, and then you've got this. Actually, it's kind of part of the primary ridge, actually. Uh, well, that's the primary ridge there. This would be a secondary ridge. But so you've got good access, but it's a blank slate. So a place like this, you know, you'd have to come in and build some road infrastructure for one, for sure. That's one thing I can't stress enough with properties like this. The first thing you need to do once you've gone through all your checks of whether this property is good or not is you need to have good road access before you start any construction. You need to build that road and do it right. Uh, put in your culverts, put in your drainage dishes, all that stuff. Because if you're doing construction with a shitty road, uh, it's a really bad experience. And I, and I experienced that for sure on my property. I should have. I had did a lot of road work at the beginning. I should have done more. Because I had probably over two dozen experiences of trucks getting stuck and things like that. Nah, maybe not two dozen. Call it over, over a dozen. Um, but a, a pain. And it really derails your day and it costs you money. And so it's better to deal with that road stuff up front. And so in a property like this, you definitely want to do that. You want to make sure you get your accesses in. Decide where you're going to put your the house. Probably going to be in this area where you've got some access here. Um, you could also make another access here if you wanted to. But it looks like you could do it all here. And so there's very little for road infrastructure here. You're going to do it all. And so you got to make sure that... You know, even in a dry place like Utah, um, in these areas, in these mountains, you're still going to get lots of snow. It's boreal, so you're going to get snow, you're going to get snow melt, and you'll probably get some precipitation throughout the spring and the fall. And so you need to make sure that that road infrastructure is in there. But this would be a great candidate for a homestead, probably an unbelievable view down into the valley. Um, and you're right out of everything, but you're private, and so a property like this is, you know, this is going to be a million dollar endeavor to, to get in here. Um, if you're going to make a half decent house, call it a single family home for two kids and a, and a, and a couple, uh, road access, infrastructure, you're off grid, you name it, you're going to be probably close to a million dollars to get that going, perhaps more in today's economy. That's just the reality of it. That's why we generally advocate for people to buy properties that have infrastructure but sometimes if the infrastructure is so poorly placed and done it's not worth it you're better off building from scratch building from scratch is ideal if you got the money and the time but that doesn't usually help most people so that's why we just generally say go with um, stuff that's there so that was 20 acres that one and um, yeah raw land on a mountainside it's pretty beautiful let's go check out another one in one of these other green areas. So this is 60 acres. Now this is what we're talking about. This is nice. Just looking at this, this is a beautiful layout. Uh, also keep in mind folks, these properties are not for sale. These are just random properties that we pick and um, just to show you the bones. These aren't listings. Um, if you wanna see us do this with listings, um, go to freedomfarmers.com and sign up for our Homestead Accelerator program. You can take my um, Finding the Perfect Homestead Property course, which there's a link to watch a webinar on, and I'll give you some tips and tricks. So click on that in this video or down below. Check that webinar out. Check out the course. If you want to see us do this weekly, we publish 10 to 30 properties a week that are active listings for sale. And then we do this whole process and put them through the 11 scales of permanence and everything. We do that every single week. So if you want to see more of that, you can check that out there. But this property, just from what I see on the map, has all the hallmarks of a good property. Good private access in, uh, lots of trees. We've even got a pond, which is probably fairly rare in Utah. Um, but we've got driveway in. We've got turnaround driveway access. We've got an outbuilding of some kind, some kind of barn or shop. Um, we've got a place for gardens, things like that right around the homestead. Perfect. You get your zone one right all on there. And we still got lots of trees on the property, lots of wild areas 
to explore. This is at 2,400 meters. So this is fairly high elevation. And, uh, but because it's further south, you know, 2,400 meter elevation in Utah is not the same as 2,400 meter elevation in British Columbia <laughs> or, or Idaho for that matter. Quite, quite a bit different. Um, but still, you're, you know, you're out in the elements and, um, but you know, you're not much to Cedar City here. You're probably 20 minute, half an hour drive to get to town. So that's not too bad. You get, so you get access to a town or village that has amenities and things like that. None of this big ag is going to matter for you. You're not going to be in any of the, um, blast radius of these chemicals and, and such. So you're, you're, you're right tucked away. So that's all good, but that's a nice 60 acre looking homestead. Let's just go a little bit further south here and look at, this is 95 acres, a uh, very similar situation. Beautiful. Um, you know what though? The aspect isn't that great on here, but it's not that mountain above. Isn't too bad. Uh, I often will say, you know, if you got north facing, uh, this house is actually east facing. So that's nice. Actually, you get the morning sun coming up. These mountains aren't going to be, uh, in the way of your winter sunshine, uh, too much. Cause they're, they're not too high up, but this, if you want to do this test, just go up to the sun tool here. Whoops. Put in your click on that tool there, put 1221, which is the winter solstice, put that in and then move the tool and just see how the sun looks at the winter solstice. So where are we here? Oh, take your guy, put him down there. And then, so our sun is setting at the winter solstice about 3.30. That's not so bad. That's not so bad. Because, you know, for a lot of places, the sun's setting, even if it's on flat ground at 4 o'clock at the winter solstice. So, yeah, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. at your winter solstice, that's fine. That gives you more than enough um, daylight to do greenhouse growing and um, enough light in the house. So instead of them facing the house south, they faced it east, which is good. Eastern aspect is is good. Morning light is better than afternoon light because afternoon light in the summer sucks. You know, you got sun coming right down in the windows on the west at four or five o'clock at the summer solstice. It's really, really hot. You don't want that. So this is good. So nice infrastructure um, placements here. Beautiful turnaround driveway. Got some kind of shop here. There's probably a three, two or three car garage here. Another type of barn or shop here. Perfect placement. If you are on a homestead like this, going to develop gardens, like um, just kitchen gardens and stuff like that, you can do it all right here in this landing, which is perfect. So you just take some of those trees down. Maybe you don't even need to. There's a decent amount of land there. Uh, and then you could bring other agricultural endeavors out further out into these areas. But you really don't need to cut trees down on this property at all. It's just, just in your immediate area. But this has got a great landing. I like how they got this road coming in here. Um, all your, oh, there's going to be, this is so cool. There's going to be very little shedding here. You get a little bit, you know, you, you, this pond is in a, uh, this is a little bit of a watershed. It's all going to melt in there. Um, if they didn't do it already, you know, you could put drainage ditches on the high side of, of the driveway here so that all this stuff sheds and then crosses into a culvert filling up that pond. If that's not already done, it probably is, but if it isn't done, you could also do that. Another little secondary pond up here. This is a banger property. This is like an absolute, this is, you know, depending on the condition of the house and all that, this is most likely an A-rated property because we got infrastructure for farming, homesteading. We've got house, we got two ponds. We've got lots of um, natural areas around us. We've got fields. We've got good access. We've got good zones of use. This is a really good property. So yeah, that's it for Utah, folks. I mean, it's limited um, because... There's just very few green zones in Utah, but that's just kind of the nature of, of what it is. Uh, you might have your reasons to live in Utah, and that's not for me to judge. That's up to you. Moab is a pretty cool town, though, I have to say. I've been to Moab, and uh, it's a pretty neat spot. And you might even find towards Durango, so Durango, Colorado is up here, one of my favorite parts of Colorado. Um, you might find in this zone here, too, might be a cool spot. 
um, about the same elevation as the other places, but then you're kind of close to Moab. And Moab's got lots of stuff you need. If you like mountain biking and, and outdoor sports, rock climbing, everything like that, Moab's the place to be. I really like it. So you might, you know, we could have maybe picked out a spot there because that is a neat spot. But I wouldn't be surprised if prices are really high there because Moab's really trendy. But um, yeah, folks, that's Utah. So let me know where you guys want me to go next. Put a comment down there. Smash the like, share this with your friends, and we'll see you in the next one.